Hi, I'm Zhan Wen. In today's talk, I'm going to present time series anomaly detection using imitation learning for structural health monitoring. This is presented in the conference hosted by the International Association for Bridge Maintenance and Safety in Denmark 2024. An infrastructure is assumed to be in a normal state when we receive stationary measurements. When the time series becomes non-stationary, changing from one constant speed to another, we would argue that anomaly exists in the time series as well as in the infrastructure. Just by looking at the time series, we might say that the anomaly happens around here because the lower point in this cycle is much higher than the previous ones. However, this is a synthetic time series and I know where exactly the anomaly is. The time series becomes non-stationary from the middle of it. By doing manually anomaly detection, we would have around one year of delay. Manual anomaly detection does not work in practice, not just because of the delay that we have here, but also in real life, in practice, we would have thousands of time series that change could be each second or each minute when we have new measurements. We would need a lot of people to monitor each time series if we want to do manual anomaly detection. And this is an impossible task. In addition, uh, most of the time, the change in the baseline is really subtle that even with our eyes, it's hard to identify where the anomaly is. So our goal here is to have a data-driven method that can detect the anomaly automatically without human intervention. And by doing so faces a few challenges. The first one is that the time series in practice are usually overlapped by reversible patterns caused by the environmental factors, as well as measurement noise. Most of the time, the scale of the reversible patterns and the noise is much larger than the baseline change that we want to detect. In the next methodology session, we will see how we can use switching common filter and imitation learning to tackle these challenges. Given the same time series that we just saw, it is easy to draw a stationary baseline behind it as well as the periodic patterns. By using common filter, we can extract these hidden states numerically, as well as the residual term that the model cannot capture. When the time series is non-stationary, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Here, we would need a switching common filter where we have two models competing with each other on one time series. Here, we have level stationary model as well as the second one called trans stationary. For the first half of the time series, where the level is stationary and the model one would dominate the analysis. It will extract the hidden states as we just saw in the common filter. And when it goes to the second half of it, the level stationary model can no longer give precise prediction. So the trans stationary model would dominate. And by using switching common filter, we will have a probability of regime switch of model two here that could estimate the probability of each model. So the probability of regime switch jump after the anomaly happens. And this is notated as pi here. For some approaches, we rely on the probability of regime switch to trigger an alarm. So we set a threshold when the probability of regime switch is higher than this threshold and the, the alarm is triggered. However, this approach does not work all the times when the threshold is not correctly calibrated. For example, if the threshold is too high, even we see a big change in the probability of regime switch, no alarm will be triggered. And for some case, when the baseline change is too small, even the probability of regime switch would miss it. However, the changes will still go to the hidden states estimation, for example, the baseline here as, as well as the residual here. So here we propose to use imitation learning on top of switching common filter that not only relies on the probability of regime switch to trigger an alarm, but also the changes in the, the changes of pattern in our baseline and the residual term. 
So what is imitation learning? The goal of it is to reproduce experts' demonstration. Each demonstration is defined as a pair of states and action. The state in this study is defined as the mean value of the hidden states over a time history, as well as the pi probability of region switch over a time history. And the action given by the ac experts or in practice given by an engineer or an ex inspector, they are defined by either triggering alarm or not. To train our IL agents, we will need a lot of time series. And in this study, we use synthetic time series generated using Bayesian dynamic linear model. For a stationary time series, all the measurements would be labeled as stationary. And for the non-stationary time series, we would separate three parts of it. Uh, for the measurements where the speed is constant, we would label as stationary as indicated from the beginning of the time series and the end of the, this time series. For the measurements where the speed, uh, the baseline has a um, changing speed, all the measurements in between would be labeled as non-stationary. And this is the framework to train the uh, IL agents. We firstly have our synthetic time series with normally labels. We use switching common filter to process this time series so as to have the hidden states. We pass the hidden states to the IL agents and based on what it sees in the hidden states, it will decide an action and com we will compare this predicted action with the true labels that we have so as to train the agents. Once the agent is pre-trained, we will test it on a real time series following the same process, except that here we don't no longer have the anomaly labels and the agents will decide an action based on different uh, states that it sees. We test the agent's performance on a synthetic time series as well as a real one. On this slide, we have the synthetic time series that spans for 20 years. And we have two anomalies happening here indicated by the vertical dashed line. The labels of this time series are shown in these figures where at the beginning, the speed is constant, all the measurements are labeled as stationary, and then the speed changes and we label this measurement as non-stationary and it goes back to stationary again. And when the second anomaly happens, the measurements are labeled as non-stationary again. Using switching common filter, this is the probability of region switch. So if we have a threshold of around 0 0.5, this, um, the probability of region switch can capture the first uh, anomaly. However, it will miss the second anomaly. By using imitation learning with switching common filter, we can detect the first anomaly much earlier than the probability of region switch and it consistently triggers more alarms when uh, after 13 years. And for the second anomalies, it can also capture this while we almost see no changes in the probability of region switch. And on, uh, we also test our IL agents on a real-time series that measures the elongation on a bridge in Montreal. So the original raw time series is assumed to be anomaly free because we know nothing happened on the bridge during this period from 2019 to 2021. And on top of the original raw time series, I add a very small anomalies on it that shift the baseline, the speed from a constant speed to another. And here with our eyes, it's hard to identify it because the anomaly is super small. And these are the labels of the measurements. By using switching common filter, it can capture the region switch almost at the end of the time series. And by using imitation learning, it can detect it much earlier, almost like at the beginning uh, when the anomaly is developing and it gives more alarms from here. For this time series, I also test with another model called Profit proposed by Meta and this model trigger an alarm before I introduce the anomaly. So this is a false alarm. To conclude this talk, using switching common filter with imitation learning can detect 
the region switches much earlier. It can reduce missed and false alarm, and it has the capability to continuously detect multiple anomalies in one time series. However, the limitations of it is that it heavily depends on the similarity between the synthetic training data and the real data. So if our synthetic uh, data is similar to the real one, we can expect that it can perform well. But if we train it on very simple synthetic time, uh, time series and the real time series is very complicated, then it would fail. So to tackle this problem, we would need to train our agents on real time series. But we cannot do that because the real time series sometimes could be very complicated to have manual labels on it. For example, on this time series, which is a displacement from a dam measured uh, from, from a dam in South France. And this time series is super complicated. We see there's a lot of baseline changes and the periodic pattern and the noise patterns are complicated that we don't know how to label this. And if we don't have the labels, we cannot train our IL agent. So the next step for us is that we are now exploring to use reinforcement learning to train our anomaly detection agents. It has the potential to get rid of the labels because in reinforcement learning, it is a designed reward that drives the agents to learn. Here is one example in the Pong game. So the reward is designed as a positive or negative numerical number. When it catches the Pong, it get a plus one. And when it misses it, it will, uh, it, it, it will get a minus one as punishment. And the right side is the agent, the left side is the computer. And we will see how the agents play against computer by training multiple times. And it, yeah, it's uh, decide to do different action and the action is moving the paddle up or down so as to maximize the total score in this game. And um, by using the same principle, we will use the reinforcement learning agents in a time series environment where we have a common filters working behind. So um, for a stationary time series, the common filter can already work well and the agents does not need to trigger any alarm. It just need to do nothing and it can receive a pretty high reward, which is defined by the likelihood or uh, that compare its prediction with the true observation. So for this time series, it predicts well, it has a high uh, reward. When the time series becomes non-stationary and anomalies happen, if the agents still decide to do nothing, not triggering any alarm, the prediction would be really off from the observation and the reward defined by the likelihood would be lower. If the agent explore to trigger an alarm here to intervene the model so as to adapt the model to our observation and you will get a higher likelihood as reward. And when you explore to trigger an alarm earlier and this is a better triggering, the um, uh, likelihood would be higher. And when you uh, trigger an alarm exactly at the timestamp where we introduce this anomaly, you will get the maximum likelihood as 1088. On the other hand, if you trigger an alarm too early and uh, pr provide a false alarm, the likelihood would drop again. So by doing so, uh, we can encourage you, we can use the likelihood to give the agent reward or punishment so as to encourage it to do the right action at the right time to trigger better alarm for structural health monitoring.